بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إخواني I'd like to welcome all of you brothers and sisters to this which is just a personal message from myself as nasiha as advice to you brothers and sisters who are suffering or you know somebody who is suffering. Ikhwani, we have to remember why we are here. Why am I here? Why are you here? Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created man and jinn except to worship me. So now that we know our purpose, now we know that we are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we also need to remember that in his glorious book, in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, we have ample mention, ample mention, giving us a guide, giving us a way to live our lives. Now you, my dear brother or my dear sister, you may feel that there is nobody. You have nobody. You, know, you have nobody who understands you. Nobody who truly knows what you're going through. Nobody can, who can appreciate the difficulties. Maybe your family has left you. Maybe your spouse has left you. Maybe your children has, have left you. Maybe your friends have abandoned you. Maybe society has abandoned you. Know, my dear brother and sister, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never abandon you. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you are going through. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sees all things. So when you are alone and nobody else is around, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees your suffering. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your pain. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of your situation. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows all things within his creation. And ultimately we have to remember that this life is a test. This life is a test. And me and you, we can't simply think that just because we have said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to test us. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ankabut, right at the beginning of this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim, أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me and is telling you, Alif Lam Mim, do the people think do the people think that they will be left to say, we believe and they will not be tried? Do we think that we can just say, we believe and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to test us? In the very next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us But we have certainly tried those who came before them So those who came before us were tried my dear brother and my dear sister And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And Allah will surely make evident those who are truthful from those who are the liars so do we say La ilaha illallah? We accept that Allah is the one who created us We accept that Allah is the disposer of our affairs so then when we are tried, do we turn back to Allah or do we look for other means? This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make evident those who are liars. So when, they are, when it's easy, they are Muslims. They hold on to their religion. But when it gets difficult, when it gets difficult, they leave their religion and they turn to others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to remember that it's not just enough to say, oh, I'm, go I'm being patient. And then, subhanAllah, we don't actually display patience in our actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created death and he created life to test which one of us is best in terms of our actions, is best in terms of our deeds. So this whole world, this whole dunya, our whole existence in this dunya is a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us as to which one of us is best. Elsewhere in the Quran, elsewhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabari wa s-sala inna allaha ma'as sabirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Oh you who believe, me and you, me and you. Allah has blessed us to be Muslims. Allah is addressing me and you in the Quran. Oh you who have believed, oh you who have believed, seek help and patience through prayer. So my dear brother and sister, when you find that you're all alone and it seems like it's just getting too much, it seems like you can't go on, Nobody is there to help you. Nobody understands you. You feel that you can't carry this burden. Allah says, seek help through patience and prayer. Seek help, be patient. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, Inna Allah sabirin Indeed, Allah is with those who are patient. So be patient for the sake of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you and will aid you and he will make your difficulties easy. <inaudible> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, with ev after every single hardship comes ease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this twice. He reiterates it. <inaudible> In two ayahs which are next to each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats it. Indeed, with hardship comes ease. Indeed, with hardship comes ease. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will not burden a soul with more than it can bear. So my dear sister, my dear brother, know that your test that you are going through, Allah has tested you like this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite with uh, wisdom and his infinite knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you can bear this test. So be strong. Know that Allah is not going to test me with more than I am able to bear. So be strong for the sake of Allah. Have patience for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your affairs easy for you. Elsewhere in the Quran, elsewhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions those people who, when disaster strikes them, when calamity strikes them, they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Indeed, we belong to Allah, and indeed to Allah we are going to return. So any calamity strikes, the first thing that they do is they remind themselves and those around them, this is from Allah. We are going to be returning to Allah. We are going to be questioned by Allah. So let's remain patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About these people in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about these people in the very next ayah. These people who say we, have, we belong to Allah and we are going to be returning to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about these people. These are those upon whom are the blessings from their Lord and His mercy. And it is these who are the rightly guided. Subhanallah. So if you turn back to Allah, if you remain patient for the sake of Allah, then Allah will have mercy on you and Allah's blessings will descend on you and Allah will make your difficulties into ease. So be patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions people who they are patient for the sake of Allah and they, are, you know, they establish their prayer. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions how for them there are gardens underneath which rivers flow. And there is perpetual bliss. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Upon them the angels will enter. 
And then in the very next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what the angels will say to these people. Oh my dear brother and sister, keep patient for the sake of Allah. And on the day of resurrection, when you have entered into Jannah, Insha'Allah, when you have entered into Jannah, the angels will say, Salamun alaykum. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you. The angels will give them salam. Peace be upon you because of what you patiently endured. Because you patiently endured this magic or this evil eye or any calamity. Peace be on you this day. And everything that you see, your palaces in Jannah, your rivers in Jannah, your trees in Jannah, this is because you were patient in the dunya. So I advise you, my dear brothers and sisters, be patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something that, you know, if you treat your enemies well and speak to them a good word, it may be that your enemies will become your closest companions. And then Allah says, but none is given this except those who are patient. And then Allah says, and none is granted this patient except those who have a large portion of good. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you patience, my dear brother and sister, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants what is good for you. So be patient for the sake of Allah jalla wa ala. Elsewhere in the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجَرٌ كَبِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, except for those who are patient and they do righteous good deeds, those are the ones who will have forgiveness and a great reward. Subhanallah, look how many times in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning patience. He's telling me and he's telling you, be patient my slave. Whatever you go through, remain patient. For those who are patient, they will have their reward without any accounting. There will be no hisab for them. They will just have reward upon reward because of the patience that they used to have. So my dear sister, my dear brother in Islam, be patient, be patient, be patient. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that nobody can have a blessing greater than the one who is blessed with patience. Nobody can have a blessing greater than patience. This hadith is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. There is no blessing that Allah will, that will give to somebody except the, the uh, blessing of patience. This is greater than all of the blessings. After Islam, this is greater than all of the blessings that a person is patient. That a person is patient. Elsewhere in the Sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as is reported by Anas radiallahu an, and is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, patience is when calamity first strikes. So when dealing with jinn or ruqya, ikhwani, what does this mean? It means that we should be patient upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah, patient upon making ruqya. We shouldn't seek other means. We shouldn't go through haram ways. And then when everything is okay or when everything seems to be okay, then we say, now I am going to be patient. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the real patience is when the calamity first strikes. So when you are first going through this calamity, now it is upon you. Now the real true patience is to be Patient upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Do not seek more than that. Do not seek to go past that. Do not seek to do less than that. Stick to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And this is patience. Be patient upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And be patient with what happens afterwards. Because this is from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Elsewhere, as is reported by Abu Hurair radiallahu an, And is recorded by uh, Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when Allah desires good for someone, someone, he afflicts him. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires good for somebody, he tests him. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Why when Allah wants good for you, will he test you? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that the believer is not afflicted with any pain or any stress or any anxiety, even if it is the pricking of the thorn except that due to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate some of his sins. So imagine subhanallah, we have millions upon millions of sins. 
And because of these trials that we are going through, maybe we will come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and we have no sins to account for. SubhanAllah. Wasn't it worth it in the end? In the dunya, 20 or 30 years or 40 or 50 years of struggling and striving and pain and test and trials. And yet Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you enter into Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la with Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, and the rest of the companions, radiyallahu anhum ajma'een. And when they are sitting in their majlis, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting there, and Abu Bakr, and Umar, and Uthman, and Ali, and all of the companions are sat there, and they are all mentioning their stories, and the scholars are there, and the martyrs are there, and the pious ones, and the truthful ones are there, and they are all sitting there mentioning what they did in the dunya, which got them to this high station in Jannah. And you are sat amongst them. Imagine you are sat amongst them. You are sat at the feet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are sat next to Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. And all of the companions and all of the scholars of Islam. And they are all going through their story one by one. And now it's come to your turn. What did you do, O Abdullah? What did you do, O Amatullah, to enter into this high station of Jannah? And you say, I was not a scholar of Islam. I was not a mujahid. I never died on the battlefield. Rather, I was going through a calamity. And I read the statement of Allah, يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ That for the patient, Allah will give them their reward without any reckoning. And I was patient. And I was patient. So because I was patient, in the dunya for all that time. Now I am in eternal bliss with the best of creation. My dear brother and sister, be patient. Be patient and know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as is recorded by Imam Muslim, he says, how extraordinary is, how amazing, how ajeeb is the affair of a Muslim. How amazing, how confusing, how startling is the affair of the believer. And this is not the case except for the believer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, if good comes to him, he is grateful and he is thankful to Allah. So when something good happens to him, we are th he is thankful to Allah and this is good for him. But when something evil and some test befalls upon him, he is steadfast and this is good for him and this is even better for him. So there is only goodness. When good things happen, we praise Allah, we thank Allah. When tests come our way, we are patient. We are patient and we get rewarded for both things. SubhanAllah, reward upon reward. Do you see how the one who is patient, he gets his reward and inshaAllah he will enter into high stations of Jannah on the day of resurrection. Ikhwani, I want to mention something which happened to the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. So many times we look at our tests and our trials and we feel sorry for ourselves. We feel sorry for ourselves. Nobody else is going through something like this. I've lost my parents, I've lost my family, I've lost my wealth, my children, etc. etc. But look at the tests of the Prophet. Look at the trials that he went through. He came with a message of La ilaha illallah. He came with a message of La ilaha illallah. He came with this message of Tawheed. And yet his people, they beat him. His people stoned him. And as is narrated in Bukhari and in Muslim, he was stoned by his people. And Abdullah ibn Masood, he says, it is as if I can see right now in front of me that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was beaten and his blood was flowing down his face. Abdullah ibn Masood, he says, it's as if I can see the blood flowing down the face of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet, he still turned to Allah and he said, Oh Allah, forgive my people. They do not know. Look at the patience of the Prophet ﷺ. If he had made dua at that time, Oh Allah, destroy these people. Verily, Allah would have sent down his adab. The punishment of Allah would have descended on these people. But instead, he wiped his blood, his blessed blood from his blessed face with his blessed hands. And he said, Oh Allah, forgive my people because they do not know. Look at the 
patience of the Prophet وسلم, in dealing with these calamities. So me and you, my dear brother and sister in Islam, when calamity befalls us, turn back to Allah. Turn back to Allah. Does Allah know your situation? The answer is yes. Did your situation come about by coincidence? The answer is no. Did your situation come about by the permission and the decree and the will of Allah? Yes. So if Allah knows your situation, if Allah decreed your situation, is Allah able to lift your fitna, lift your trial, lift your test from you? The answer is yes. So if Allah knows your suffering, if it came as a result of the decree of Allah, and Allah is able to do all things and is able to lift your suffering, why not turn back to Allah? Why not be patient, seeking your reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And ikhwani, when we are making this ruqya, then we should be patient upon the ruqya that is from the Qur'an and from the sunnah. And we should not seek other means. We should not seek ulterior or alternative methods. Because when we are not patient, then we are not going to get our reward. So I ask Allah to make you patient. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow patience upon us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a full reward for our patience on Yom al -Qiyama. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease the suffering of all those who are suffering. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure the ill and to cure the suffering amongst the Muslims. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon those who have already passed. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather me and you in Jannatul Firdaus Al-A'la with the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and the pious and the martyrs and the companions and what great company they are. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa and I'll forgive you and I'll forgive you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.